talent that overcame all obstacles of life. A dispute that almost turned into a tragedy and an incredibly high price to pay for the right to do one's favorite thing. Previously, premises of the present National Folk Decorative Art Museum of Ukraine were a place of residence for the lover Archimandrites. Now paintings, ceramics, carpets, pisanki and many other decorative items are being kept in the museum. The building, that was earlier damaged by the fire, became one of the largest art museums in Ukraine. Hello, barely notable fans behind which one can see the Kingdom of Flowers. Riot of Flowers gives prospects. It's like a whirlwind of colors that hands thick in the air. Very often the flowers of Katerina Bilokur do not grow out of the ground. It seems as though they are simply floating in space. Large flowers are painted in the front, smaller ones in the back, as if they are scattered among hot yellow and green leaves. Each flower does not have the same light. It means that Katerina Bilakur draws her own way. She has no directional light, as professional artists once had. A bright, cheerful background that won't be seen in other paintings of Katerina Bilokur, even canvases without a single scar. What is hidden behind the right of flowers painting? What difficulties did the artist face before painting this piece of artwork? No. <laughs> Future People's Artist of Ukraine, Katerina Bilokur, was born on December 7, 1900, in the village of Bohdanivka, today in the Kyiv Oblast. Before gaining Ukrainian and then international recognition, she almost repeated the destiny of Taras Shevchenko. But if the great Kobzar suffered from the despised Russian Tsar, Katerina Bilokur was punished by the people closest to her. Katerina Bilokur's mother taught her daughter to spin since early childhood. Katerina remembered how she sat near the stove and her little hands exasperated a long thin thread. But at heart, she had a great desire to paint. <laughs> This was the beginning of the 20th century. Her parents wanted the fate for their daughter to be the same as that of an ordinary Ukrainian peasant girl. Once during the Christmas holidays, her father brought a bookvar to little Katrusa. Joy knew no bounds. For a week, the girl reread the book from beginning to end. And when the time had to come to school, the parents decided that Katrusa, who learned to read by herself in a week, did not have to go to school. Not even finished primary school when she had already learned to read. Like 
The years passed, the younger brother, Grigori, grew up and went to school. The girl looked at him with envy. He had a notebook in which he could draw. I did not take them, but that time she took a notebook that belonged to her brother Rigori. She drew a horse in her brother's book. It was such a nice horse. Katerina hung her first painting on the mud stove. Before she tore a notebook into separate pages, the girl admired her works. But when her father, together with her brother Rihori, entered the room and saw these works, they became irate. Rihori broke down in tears while her father took these drawings and burned them down in the mud stove. Katerina's mother also decided to punish her. She was afraid that some village residents would see her daughter drawing and then would deride her. Moreover, none of the young men will ask for her hand in marriage. For this reason, Katerina was strictly forbidden to draw. Despite constant bans, she continued drawing in secret from her parents. She stole a canvas from her mother's room and started drawing on it using homemade brushes made of cherry twins with a fastened piece of a cat hair. In the early 20s, fate dealt a new bloom to Katerina. Learning about the Mirhard College of Art and Poetry, Katerina left for Mirhard. She took two works with her. Unfortunately, she was not accepted to the college as she did not have a primary education. But already in 1924, fate smiled for the artist for the first time. A teacher couple, Ivan and Nina Kalita, came to Bogdanivka. They quickly heard rumors about a strange local girl. The couple met with Katerina and invited her to visit them. There, she saw real pains for the first time. What paints were in vogue in those times? Her mother painted canvases with elderberry, gelder rose and grasses to sew clothes for her family. When Katerina took those paints, she realized they did not have that same beauty that came straight from her heart. Ivana and Nina Kalita presented paints to Katerina. However, Katerina could not amuse herself with a present. After all, to paint and draw at home meant signing her own death sentence. She was afraid of bringing them home because her father might see them and punish her. So the Kalita couple proposed her to come and paint at their home. These first paintings were Katerina's first joy. Ironically, this great joy turned into bitterness. Katerina was forced to steal plywood sheets for her paintings from her father, but the risk of being caught and punished was not the artist's main misfortune. She would take the same plywood sheets and apply paints, not knowing that first it had to be grounded and then create the painting. When she learned that it was possible to paint not only on plywood but on canvas, she once again did not know that the canvas had to be grounded several times. Afterwards, she would recall how she gave up painting, tore up the finished works and then started to repair them. Only owing to her constant work like a horse did she reach the holy truth. І тільки волячою працею я доходила до тієї великої святої істини. Her creative misfortunes were wrought with personal troubles. Katerina was an attractive girl. Young men always asked for her hand in marriage. But the first question from Katerina was, Та я ж серйозно. Would you allow me to paint if I marry you? None of them agreed, so the only answer they heard in reply was the words of a Ukrainian song Go Cossack, settle a horse, you're not mine, I'm not yours. In the end, Katerina's father could not put up with his daughter's life work.
Today we can read the lines in her letters about that black-browned and black-whiskered young man who asked for her hand in marriage for almost 10 long years. We can also read about the brokerage which her father appointed without waiting for her approval. She simply had to wait for the matchmakers. She was preparing for this brokerage. She knew she would marry, but would never be able to paint. In moments of despair, she again read Kobzar by Tara Shevchenko, which the Kalita family gifted her. As if out of the blue, it crossed her mind to pray the tomb of Shevchenko without hesitation, she went on a journey taking money earned from sewing. Two days later, she arrived at the Chernecha Hill. Praying on the grave of Taras Shevchenko, 30-year-old Katerina Vilakor swore that despite her old age, at least one day for at least one hour, she would be an artist. However, parents, villagers and bad fortune prevented her dream from coming true. The first was her father. After returning from Kaniv, Katerina came to her parents' house. On a doorstep, she saw her father patching his boot. She greeted him and said, Father, please forgive me. I was not accepted to any school. I will become a self-taught artist. If you allow me to paint just a little bit, maybe I will become a talented painter. The father, realizing the futility to resist his daughter's request, allowed her to engage in painting, but only on Sunday, when all the chores are done. But the mother could not put up with it. Whenever Katerina took to the brush, she tried to blame her, saying, your friends are playing with their children, but you only paint. In late autumn 1933, something terrible happened that shook the whole village. Katerina stood in the room painting a picture when her mother started yelling at her again. Unable to hear the insult, Katerina came to her mother and said, Mother, please forgive me. Maybe I am not happy that I am who I am, but I cannot be different. If I were born disabled, would you throw me out on the street? Her mother reported, Better you were born crippled than shame us in front of the entire village. Get out of my sight. Katerina, offended by her mother's words, came out of the house to the streets, bare and dressed only in a shirt. She expected that her mother would stop her, but she was not about to stop her daughter, so Katerina decided to go to the river. Then Katerina wrote, I do not want to drown myself, I want to live, oh how I want to live, it would be interesting to know if I would have become an artist, I thought to drown or not to drown, maybe I would just frighten mother, and Katerina began to go deeper and deeper into the river. It is unknown how this story would have ended if her younger brother Pavlo did not see her. He started persuading his sister to get out of the water. When he realized that persuasion did not work, he called to his mother for help. While mother Yakulina ran to the river, Katerina was already waist deep in cold water. The mother stood on the river bank while Katerina was in the water. Katerina wanted to hear permission to paint, but her mother still kept silent. Katerina began going deeper and deeper, but when her head was almost under water, her mother's heart could not withstand it. She cried, come back, my dear child, come back and paint, but paint every day. If you do not come back, I will follow you. Watch in the next program. It was such a high price to pay to get the approval of her parents to paint every day. After the liberation of Kyiv, he left for Bohdanivka and found Katerina with her mother hungry in a cold house. The Bilokor family did not show up at the collective farm for a long time. Somehow, this had an impact on the life of Katerina Bilokor.